Geometric and arithmetic sequences. Here we go. All right. Um, a list of numbers is just whatever. I mean, you list a bunch of numbers, no big deal. Uh, a sequence is a list of numbers with a pattern. So you start looking at these patterns over here, and they have. Uh, You could start to see we go plus 1, minus 2, 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 and we could continue. Uh, this one goes plus 1, plus 2, plus 3, plus 4, plus 5, plus 6, plus 7, plus 8, plus 9, plus 10, etc. This is... Uh, this is the squares. If you look at them, it's plus three, five, seven, nine. Anytime you're going up by an odd number, it's probably going to be something to do with squares. So you got 49, 64, 81, 100, etc. Arithmetic sequences, uh, there's a common difference. Arithmetic sequence is just a linear, linear sequence, okay? So your arithmetic is linear, which means you're talking about y equals mx plus b. Constant difference or common difference is basically just the slope. So which of these are arithmetic? Up 3, up 3, up 3. We're adding the same thing. So our common difference is 3, and this is yes. This is going times 3, times 3, times 3. That's actually geometric, so that's no, not arithmetic. This one's going, uh, again, it looks like times 3, times 3, times 3. That'll be geometric. We'll get to that in a few minutes. And this is plus a half, plus a half, plus a half, plus a half. So it's yes. And D is 1 half. Plus 2, plus 2, plus 2. So it's yes. And D is 2. So our common difference is basically going to be our slope. Uh, geometric sequence is where we are multiplying. So we just saw those ones on the back there. So these are going to be exponential. Exponential. Remember our basic formula, a times b to the x. This is your what your common ratio. Your common ratio is going to be r. That's going to be the same thing as what our base is. What are we multiplying by each time? So this is the first term. So this is times 2 times 2 times 2. r equals 2. We're multiplying 2 each time. You go back here. This is times 3, and this was times 3. So these two back here were geometric and they both had an R of 3 common ratio. So common differences are adding the same number, that's linear, Co um, and then common ratio, multiplying the same number, that's exponential. Okay, we've got a visual here, so we start with uh, 5 and then we're up to, uh, looks like we had 3 across the top, I added those two and I added 2 down here. Um, now we've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven across the top. So I added one more each on the end, and I've got one, two, three, four, and two more at the bottom. So really I'm adding four and adding four. So this is arithmetic, and because we're adding, and our common difference is four, we're adding four each time. Find the next three terms. Yeah, you're going to go from uh, five to nine to 13. It's going to be a T with, we're not drawing these things, it'll take forever, 17 and 21 and 25. So we'll have, we have five dots, we have uh, nine dots, we have 13 dots, plus four more is 17, 21, 25. Okay, pay it forward, do good things. So one person decides to do three nice things for, th uh, one nice thing for three people. Those three um, do nice things for this person here. So you can see you got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. So we went from one to three to nine. Each of those does three more, three more, three more. And you're going to go times three, which is 27. So you got 27, uh, 81. And then what's 81 times three must be... Uh, 243, is that right? Something like that. Um, so and this is geometric, and we have geometric because we're multiplying, and our common ratio is 3. So do good things. 
Okay, state weather were arithmetic, geometric, or neither. I'd just like to start with uh, plus six, plus six. So our common difference is six, so it's arithmetic. We are adding, okay? If I try plus a half, and then it's plus one, and then it's plus two, when it's going up like that, it's most likely going to be times two, times two, times two. And we get, uh, we get a common ratio of two, and it's geometric. And then I've got three stars, one, two, three, four, five, six stars, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine stars. So the stars is geometric, and we have an R of three. Again, oh, wait, that's not geometric. What am I saying? I, I felt like it was times three, but it's really, it's really arithmetic. Holy cow, because we just added arithmetic because we just added. It's plus three, so the common difference is three. Okay, we have a formula for a uh, sequence of numbers. This, so this is the first term. A sub 1 is the first term, and this is the nth term, A sub n. So we have that stuff written down there. So this is going to be a really important formula for what we have here. It's just a, it's, it's a little bit of a redo of y equals mx plus b. So if you're looking for the nth term, you take the first term and add on the common difference n minus 1 times. And if you think about it, what are we doing? We're starting with a first term, and if I want to find the fourth term, I add on the common difference three times and end up where I'm at. So this is the, uh, the first term is a sub 1. The common difference is d. n is the nth term. So this is the term value, and this is the, whoa, 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 what happened there? Term value, value, and this is the term number, term number of that value. So when they give you, this is, this is um, n equals 1, and then a sub n equals. So the first term is 55. The second term is 50. The third term is 45. So a1 is 55. The common difference, I'm going down 5 each time. Is this arithmetic? Yes. And write the formula for the arithmetic. a sub n equals the first term plus n minus 1 times the common difference, which was negative 5. So if you, wanted to, if you wanted to graph this, if I said this was going to be at 1, I would go 5, 10, 15, 20, 25, 30, 35, 40, 45, 50, 55. So let's call that 55. Okay? And then my slope, the common difference is just slope. So down 5, right 1. There's 2 at 50, there's 3 at 45, there's 4 at uh, uh, 40, and we could keep going, and now we could find anything. When do we get to 0? Well, we could solve that if we wanted to. We could put a 0 in here, and then uh, and we could divide it out. It must be an 11th term, 12th term. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11. Yeah, the 12th term. Notice, zero, the zero term, which, so we don't really do a y-intercept on these ones. The y-intercept here would actually be 60. So if I actually wrote this as a y-intercept, y equals negative 5x plus 60. That n minus 1 is what changes things up a little bit. Okay. Oh, what is the equation for the nth term? I found it. Find a sub 13. So a sub 13, this is how you write it, 55 plus... 13 minus 1 times negative 5. So I just take 55 plus 12 negative 5. So I'm, I'm starting with the first term. I'm gonna, to get the 13th term, I add on negative 5 12 times. 55 minus 60. A13 is negative 5. A13 is negative 5. Oh, ordered pairs. Yeah, I have that up here. N comma A sub N, 1 comma 55, 2 comma 50. Okay, find the find A24. I'm looking for the 24th term. So this is where we don't want to do repeated, repeated addition. I'm going to write, I'm going to use A sub N equals A sub 1 plus N minus 1 times D. So here is A sub 24 equals the first term. There's the first term plus 24 minus 1, which is 23, times negative 6. So into my calculator, I just do, I, I believe I can do 24 minus 1 in my head. So I grab my calculator, 9 plus 23 times negative 6. Because I'm subtracting 6, 
I'm subtracting 6 23 times. That's the first term, and then I'm going to the 24th term. So I get negative 129. Next one, write an equation for the nth term. Notice they've given me the sixth term. This is the value of the sixth term. So again, a sub n equals a sub 1 times n minus 1 times d. The first thing we need to do, the value of the twelfth term, or sixth term, is 12. The first term is, I don't know. We need to solve for that. n minus 1, this is the sixth term, and then d is 8. So we're, really we're plugging and chugging. This is pretty basic algebra here. So 12 equals a1 plus 5 times 8 minus 40 minus 40. And I get negative 28 is the first term. So now I can write the formula for the nth term. That's for any term now. And I take my first term plus n minus 1 times the common difference. And now I could find any term. You want to find the 100th term? Plug in 100. There you go. Um, oh, and now find, what are we doing now? Oh, we're doing a new problem, and I took up all this space. How do I delete this stuff off of here? I have no idea. What are we doing? What, what, what are we doing? Okay, erase pen. Let's do the next one. Okay, so now we're doing the same thing. This is the, the value of the term is negative 12. The first term is I don't know. And then the term number is 5, and the common difference is negative 4. Negative 12 equals a1 plus negative 16. Add 16, add 16. The first term is 4. And then we're going to go, um, the nth term is the first term plus n minus 1 times the common difference. And that's all we need. And then we could find whatever we wanted. Okay. Geometric, 3, 6, 12, 24, 48. We are multiplying by 2 each time. So we go back to y equals a times b to the x. And we start thinking about the fact that this is the first term. So this is a1, a2, a3, a4, a5. So this is the first term, this is the second term, this is the third term, this is the fourth term, this is the fifth term. So we're multiplying on the number 2, one less than the term value. So that's where this n minus 1 comes from, very similar to the arithmetic. So what we're going to have here is we're going to have y equals a times r, a1 times r to the n minus 1. That's going to be our formula for the nth term. In fact, that shouldn't be a y. That should be an a sub n. a sub n. a sub n. So instead of a y, we had a sub n equals a1 times r to the n minus 1. So we spent a whole chapter on uh, exponential growth there, and oftentimes this is done in conjunction with that, but it's the same idea. In order to figure out the common ratio, you have to divide. You divide the second term divided by the first term, or any term divided by the term right below it. So again, it's the nth term. R is the common ratio. A1 is the first term. An is the value of the nth term. What is the formula? So I get A1 is negative 1. The ratio is second term divided by the first term. Remember, we're reversing the idea of multiplication. So notice, these can fluctuate back and forth from positives to negatives. So I get a n equals the first term times the common ratio raised to the n minus 1. Watch your order of operations here. You must do exponents before you do multiplication. a sub 13 equals negative 1 times negative 3 to the 13 minus 1 or 12. So I get negative 1 times negative 3 raised to the 13 minus 1 or 12. Holy Hannah, that's a big old number. Negative 531,441. 500, okay. You got to watch out here. Some people want to say times 5. This is actually this is actually r equals 100. Second term divided by the first term, which is 1 fifth. I would just go ahead and use 0.2. That's fine. What is the formula? This is a1, this is r. That's all you need for the nth term. You actually need less things for, for this one than for the other one. Um, and I get uh, r to the n minus 1. If I want the eighth term, it's 500 times 0.2 to the 8 minus 1, or 7th. 
I do that, that math in my head, no big deal. 500 times 0 0.2 raised to the seventh, and I got 0 0.0064 because we are declining in a hurry. 500, 124. Next, we would have, holy cow, four fifths, four twenty fifths, and so on and so forth. Okay, so when we talk about it on a graph, we should be able to quickly see that this is going to be a, um, so the first thing I need to do is to figure out what R is. 14 divided by 7 is the big deuce. And then I get a um, uh, formula for the nth term, a sub n equals 7 times the big deuce to the n minus 1. Find a sub 15, 7 times 2 to the 15 minus 1, which is 14. That's going to be a big old value because it's, uh, it's, uh, it's exponential growth. It's 114,688. Woo, doggy. 114,688. Are we going to put that on our graph? Probably not. So if I'm going to graph this, I don't know. What do I need to count by here? Here's 1. And uh, so this is n. And this is a sub n. And then you get 1, 2, 3, 4. So if I was to try to graph this and count by... Well, what's the next one going to be? 56 times 2 must be 112. So I don't know. What do you want to count by? So if I counted by 5s, this is 1, 7, 2, 14, 3, 5, 10, 15, 20, 25, 28, 4, 5, 10, 15, 20, 25, 30, 35, 40, 45, 50, 55, 56, 55, 60, 65, 70, 75, 80, 85, 90, 95, 112. You can clearly see our exponential growth. No, it's exponential, which we already talked about. and We already had a chapter about it. It's good stuff. Oh, my gosh, we're done. Do you believe it? Do you believe in magic?